Now let's look at properties and declarations in a little more depth. We've seen this .h file before, and now we'll look at it more closely. Notice the symbols here, the at signs. These are not part of the Objective-C language. These are compiler directives. They introduce messages to the compiler that will be used to generate code that is actually compiled. You'll see, for example, here, this is the beginning of the interface section of the code, and that's a message to the compiler, and it's paired with an end. What we have here are some properties. Properties are part of Objective-C 2.0 and is now starting to be implemented more thoroughly. What happened in 2012 was that Xcode started flagging the non-use of Objective-C 2.0 constructs as warnings, not errors, but warnings. Until then, it was totally optional whether you used it or not. But now you're getting these warnings, so it is prompting the adoption of Objective-C 2.0 features, which include declared properties. Before declared properties, this interface might have looked something like this. There would have been a pair of brackets up here, and within those brackets, we might have had what we now have in declared properties. We might have had a declaration, and notice how Xcode is anticipating what I'm trying to type. This is a class UI window, a pointer to an instance of that class. So here we have a typical declaration of an instance variable, sometimes called an IVAR. It has a class, pointer, and this is the variable involved. Now I can have another instance variable up here, and I'm going to call it NSManaged. Notice how I'm getting all of these possible completions here and I just find the one I want and type it in. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm declaring these as instance variables, as IVARs, the way we used to do it. So now we're adding the managed object model. Notice there's no code completion here. There can't be because I'm declaring a variable I've never used before. But the second time I use it, I'm going to get code completion. And finally, we'll add the final piece of what we call the core data stack, the persistent store coordinator. Notice how quickly my typing goes when Xcode is doing much of the typing for me. As I'm putting in these instance variables, or IVARs, what you might notice is that I'm being very careful with the capitalization. And the reason that I'm being careful with the capitalization is that in Objective-C, capitalization does matter, as does spelling. So this variable is not the same as this variable. The capitalization does matter. And there are conventions for capitalization that we have in Objective-C. For example, variables start with a lowercase. Classes start with an uppercase. Methods start with lowercase, and you'll see that throughout the code. So now what I've got are instance variables up here. I'm going to create a multi-line comment, and you'll see that what happens here is that I've commented out the properties and replaced them with IVARs. Why do we prefer properties? One of the reasons is that Objective-C is built on encapsulation. We hide the details of how things are done. So we expose, in this case, the app delegate class, and we're exposing two methods, and we're exposing these properties. But what happens behind these properties will be revealed inside the .m file, and we'll take a look at that.